What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands 3 top 10 list and this time I'm revising my top 10 SMGs in Borderlands 3. After many recent buffs and general improvements to the game, these 10 SMGs shine above all the others. With that, let's dive in. And number 10 is... Making a glorious return to the top 10 SMGs list after a long period of disappointment is the Redistributor. This gun has gone through a lot in Borderlands 3, first being one of the strongest weapons in the game for mobbing, then getting left unloved after the additional pellet nerf on July 23rd, 2020, but after a recent buff, it has brought this thing back from the dead. On April 29th, 2021, this gun received a much needed 148% weapon damage buff, bringing it back to its glory as a mobbing beast in Borderlands 3. It can spawn in any element and its special ability is that every seventh shot is amped and deals 50 percent bonus damage those amp shots will chain the weapon damage to nearby enemies as well this gun drops from wotan in the malawan takedown number nine this better be good jumping onto the list at number nine is the torrent this arms race exclusive is the ghost burr meme personified shooting this gun is like having an a10 warthog in handheld form that said, the big knock on this gun is that much like the Tizzy, this gun will chew through your ammo, but if you're an offense over defense kind of player, then this little beast might just be for you. This gun was originally from Borderlands the pre-sequel where it was one of the best SMGs in that game as well. The torrent can spawn in fire, radiation, or corrosive elements, and it can roll with the times 2 modifier, giving you more damage per shot at the cost of an extra ammo per shot. Every 10th bullet is replaced by a shock bullet that deals 3.8 times the base damage of the gun this means that a radiation version of this gun can be an absolute shield destroyer and a corrosive version is exceptional for things like the crystals phase of the guardian takedown where enemies often have both armor and shields the torrent can be obtained from these just in arms race or as random drops from the final boss or various enemies from arms race don't hate it's number eight Sliding into the number 8 spot, we have the Proprietary License. This DLC 3 SMG combines features from multiple manufacturers to make one of the best SMGs there is. Honestly, this one could slide up even further on this list with the right build. Combining the sticky projectiles of the Chaosin with the critical ricochet of a Jacobs and the fiery burst skip ability of the Nighthawk, and the Proprietary License just shreds. This gun is basically an amalgamation of every manufacturer's gimmick rolled into one gun. And even though I'm going to list 7 more legendary SMGs, ahead of this one it's honestly one of my favorite smgs to use in the entire game it truly feels like a night hawking with chaos and bonuses the proprietary license drops from hydragoian in dlc3 let's see number seven at number seven on this list is the embers purge this malawan smg is locked to fire damage but the amount of damage you can get out of its elemental pools is absolutely insane i would honestly rank this one even higher but being locked to fire means you're going to lose some damage in mayhem modes but the special ability of this gun does does not care about matching elements. When you shoot an enemy, it will spawn a damaging incendiary pool at their feet, and this pool receives elemental splash damage bonuses, making it ridiculously overpowered right now versus just about everything in the game. There are two main downsides to this weapon. Number one, flying enemies. They will not be affected by the pools. But the second thing, and probably even more importantly, is that you cannot farm this gun. You can get it once per Vault Hunter per playthrough. So if you're trying to mid-max the parts on this weapon, you're going to have a rough time. That said, you can get it from the diamond loot room, but it's not a guaranteed thing on the wall in that room. To get the Ember's Bird, you do have to complete all of Ember's challenges and DLC 1, the handsome jackpot. This is how many times this gun can make me happy! It's number six! Sneaking back onto this list after having been previously bumped is the Chaosin. The Chaosin has had a wild journey in Borderlands 3. It was at one time the best gun in the game, a pinpoint accurate SMG that did insane damage and felt unrivaled by all other contenders. But that was before the infamous triple nerf patch on June 11th, 2020, where the Chaosin, Sandhawk, and Yellow Cake all got slapped by the angry hand of Gearbox. All three of them were actually still pretty good, but anytime there's a negative adjustment, it's easy to say that the item got killed well the chaos did die a bit that day let's be honest it was still good but nowhere near its former glory that is until february 11th 2021 when gearbox gave it a 40 percent damage buff and while 40 percent seems low compared to some of the other numbers you're gonna hear later on in this list it was enough to bring the chaos back to life and earn its spot on this list this mayhem six and above drop is most easily obtained from captain tront on athenas but it can also drop from anathema and scourge in the guardian takedown at number five is the Blood Starved Beast. This dull SMG is one of the most entertaining gunplay experiences in the entire game for me. 
shooting orbs that penetrate enemies and deal elemental splash damage. A high fire rate, a high mag size, and the ability to be full auto makes this gun just an absolute blast to use. This is one that is solid on all four Vault Hunters regardless of the build that you're using, but it's absolutely lethal in the hands of Amara or Moe's with the splash damage bonuses that you can get out of both the gun and their builds. Add to that that you can get this gun in any element and it can roll in a times three version for even more damage per shot and you can start to see why I rank this one so highly. The only real downside to this gun is that you have to kill Evil Lilith in DLC 4 to get it and that's one of the more annoying farms in all of Borderlands 3. That said, it is is absolutely worth the work. Moving on to number four. Popping up at number four is the DNA. This Mayhem 6 exclusive is only obtainable from General Trot on Desolation's Edge on Necker Tefeo or from Scourge or Anathema in the Guardian Takedown, but it's extremely easy to farm from Trot, so go for it there. This gun received a buff in January of 2021, increasing the damage by 166%, while also increasing the fire rate, reload speed, mag size, and projectile speed. These changes made this gun one of the absolute best all-around weapons in the game, much less just an SMG, and hurtled it from my worst legendary items list to number three on my old best SMGs list in a matter of just weeks. The DNA shoots out two orbs that split off in different directions with an elemental energy blade held between them. Each shot has a random element. The gun now absolutely shreds on every Vault Hunter, and being a base game item, that means that even if you don't own any of the DLC of this game, you can still get this gun in random everything in the game and now we're down to number three Jumping into the list way up here at number three is the Needle Gun. Now, speaking of SMGs that were previously horrible and now dominate, the Needle Gun received a huge 200% weapon damage buff back on June 24th, 2021, bumping it from laughing stock to one of the most coveted SMGs that you can get. Another knock on this gun had been that you could only obtain it during the Cartel event, which only came around once per year, but Gearbox recently made the Cartels, Bloody Harvest, and Broken Hearts events all permanent and and free to everybody who owns the game, essentially making this the best base game SMG, just above the aforementioned DNA. The needle gun has several really cool features. Continuous firing will increase the fire rate. It shoots slow homing needles that apply debuff that stacks up to 10 times. Enemies need to be hit at least once every two seconds or the debuff resets. The magazine refills each time you apply the 10th stack to an enemy. And when you throw reload this thing, since it's a TDR, it will home in on enemies and explode. Now, the TDR part of this thing is not really that important because TDR's got a overall nerf way back in January of this year and I kind of want them to undo that nerf. I really hope that one day they'll just say you know what that nerf was not necessary and then we bring it back but it is what it is. You can get this gun in all the elements or non-elemental and the easiest way to farm this is to follow the guide that I will post on the screen right here in the corner and that is my cartel farming guide. Essentially you can get this from Joey Ultraviolet, Josie Bite, or Franco Farm. Firewall. What you want to do is you want to try and get Josie Bite and Franco Firewall in that final room with Joey Ultraviolet. If you can do that, then you can kill the two of them over and over, leave Joey alive, and just respawn without killing Joey. And you can keep farming Josie and Franco over and over until you get this thing to drop. And as strong as this gun is, it is absolutely worth multiple runs through the cartels, which honestly is my favorite map anyhow. This one almost made it to number one, but it didn't. So it's number two. At number two is the Flipper. This Malawan SMG, lots of those on this list again, deals full splash damage and gains increasing projectiles the longer you shoot. It goes from one to three to five to seven, up to nine projectiles all at once. This means after the first few shots, you will continuously shoot nine projectiles all at once for the remainder of your mag. This makes this an absolute killing machine. Another great thing about the Flipper is that you have a 30% chance to get it from Minasaur in DLC 3, the Bounty of Blood, so that gives you a super easy farm to get this murder machine, and it is available in all the elements. This thing with a Minesweeper on Moe's is just an absolute destroyer. In the hands of Amara, this thing, because of the elemental damage and the splash damage you get, is a beast. In the hands of Flak, who will hit this thing on crits non-stop, this thing shreds. In the hands of Zane, this thing is just amazing. You can't go wrong with the Flipper, it's one of my favorite all-around guns in all of Borderlands history. And before the number one SMG was added into this game, the Flipper was hands down the most sought after SMG out there, and it's still one of the best all-around weapons in the game. Honorable mention. 
Honorable mentions go to the Smog, the Sleeping Giant, the Dark Army, and the Kib's Worth. All of these are very good SMGs, and all of them could just as easily replace the redistributor at number 10 on this list, in my opinion. And finally, here we are at number one! Finally, coming in at number one is absolutely no surprise to anybody who has ever used this gun before, the Plasma Coil. This gun was introduced with DLC 5, the Arms Race DLC, which is also known as the Designer's Cut. It can drop from any enemy, the chest, or the vendors in the Arms Race, and it is an absolute beast of a weapon. This Malawan SMG starts off slow, but it absolutely melts, and it doesn't even care if you're matching elements properly. And honestly, that's about the only knock on this gun. It's locked to radiation and shock, but like I said, using either of those, it's still going to tear up every bit of content in the game. If you've ever had a problem completing any of the content, then farm yourself up a plasma coil and go try it again. You will not regret it. So that's my top 10 legendary SMGs in Borderlands 3. Let me know down in the comment section below what SMGs you guys love and which ones that I listed that you don't like. If you guys enjoyed this video, please take a second to hit that like button and subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.